All right, welcome everybody to session 67 of Descent into Fernia. It's been a while, uh, but is there anybody that remembers enough to give a recap from last time? I'll be honest, my memory stops with us. I remember getting out we of the place where we gave the crown to uh, to Goliath. But our <laughs> mod. <laughs> we, I think we started driving around. We found a place right. to rest or rest in a cave, opening a cave. <laughs> um, someone I don't really remember showed up. Oh, yeah, the fucking... we proceeded oh, to yeah. like torture him <laughs> by putting him underneath the car. And yes. then driving Lux's over him good and friend. then wrecking the car. <laughs> and now I think Lux's we're on our only, back way. Yeah, only so, now. yeah, we sort of just blew everything up. <laughs> Lux has nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so essentially you guys uh had last time we started with uh having finished with uh slaying Lilith and then Haruman burst into the scab with a bunch of strange uh ink like uh minions and uh and demanded the crown and uh you guys agreed to give it to him reluctantly uh with uh Takash being somewhat surprisingly chill about the whole thing um afterwards uh Trebek came and uh, having seen the explosion once Haruman left um and uh and and brought the the car around so that everybody could escape from the scab <laughs> and then uh you guys began driving around Trebek had revealed that there is a, a creature called the Sibriex that is a creation of two uh, fiendish overlords, um, similar to Belshalor, but you know different creatures of the same category. Um, and supposedly, this this thing is able to uh, access information that is. Uh, unable to be accessed in other ways and and things that are supposed to be kept secret uh, is within this creature's awareness. And so Trebek felt that um, seeking the creature could be really helpful uh, to be able to figure out the ways of stopping Belshalor and and perhaps even activating the the warforged colossus to be able to use as a weapon in the coming conflict with belshalor uh particularly because there is that force field that is surrounding the flame keep cathedral which um may be able to be broken by the the strength of the warforged colossus but um so trebek is recommended going to see the cypriax but also that it is under the control of a warlord named Zariel. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't remember if, uh, let me see if he had any information on Zariel. I don't even um, I, honestly don't even remember Zariel being mentioned. <laughs> but maybe I uh just missed it. So yeah, so he mentioned that uh this warlord Zariel uh has control of the Sibriax, but um Zariel is uh a creature that loves to bargain. Uh and so it is open to bargains in order to access the Sibriax, but um, it also Zariel also kind of is tries to selfishly keep the Sibriax to themselves, so it probably will be something significant that Zariel may want. 
Uh, so you guys were trying to figure out what next steps would be from here, potentially trying to, to seek out the Sibriax. When uh, you went into a cave uh, that um, Moliota was able to, to spot uh, for some safety, and during the watch, um, I think it was uh, the branded one, uh, was on the first watch and had noticed something in the cave, went to investigate, saw a Vrock, and instantly polymorphed it into something harmless. Uh, at which point there was a discussion where uh, a couple of you were uh, awakened and... Um, trying to decide what to do with this rock uh and you decided that it was you were going to put it underneath the vehicle and uh to as a means of kind of trapping it and so the concentration was dropped it reformed under the vehicle pinned pretty severely uh lux then realized that this was Belganog. And uh, Bel Be while the branded one attempted to cast uh, Polymorph on it again to allow it to escape, uh, the Vrock was not really uh, trusting of the spell work that the branded one was using, and so did not allow his uh, resistance to drop and accept the spell, which then blocked it from occurring. And you guys decided the only thing to do was to end Belganog's life by driving over him. Uh, or, or maybe you didn't know that it was going to end his life, but it ended up wrecking him pretty severely. Uh, and he, uh, he got a few things out to Lux uh, and had mentioned that he had gone to seek Lux out because in his in in the friendship that Lux offered and the uh, ab the ability to fight on her behalf against Haruman, he had found a small glimmer of potential meaning in the the nihilism that generally he accepted. Uh, and then he passed away. Uh, at which point you guys realized that the demon grinder went was not functional anymore because one of the axles had snapped in the process of driving over Belkanag. That's so, when we use the coin. <laughs> yeah. And so you used the coin and uh, opened up a uh, portal to the Wandering Emporium. And so anything I may have missed that anybody can recall? OK. So um, you have opened the gate to the Wandering Emporium. Uh, and it, it and you guys are transported to that place um it is just as you remember it uh there are people like going between the different shops and uh a, and always different people because you you notice that there's many people kind of coming and going from the wandering emporium um and uh and yeah so you guys are are there in the middle of the in the middle of the wandering emporium um i mean my my sort of area of expertise being sort of the transfer between planes can i tell specifically like did he 
pull us out of the Nine Hells or something like that? Um, how, how would you discern that? Or what is, what abilities do you have that would give you some insight into that? Um, Check something. While he checks that, I'm curious to know what we might know or if if we know anything about Zario. Uh because obviously in like the standard version of this, she's like ruler over Avernus. Mm -hmm. But Fernia is not exactly Avernus. So I don't know if she, maybe she's not well known in the Eberron universe. Um, you can certainly, if you are trained in religion, you can make a religion check. Nope. Um. I don't know. I one of my channel divinities is the whole abjure the extra planar, but I don't know if that really ties me into that sense. Um, you know, I would give you uh, a wisdom check with proficiency to try and determine that. Wisdom with proficiency. Um... <clears throat> Plus four. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is uh a direct um teleportation within the plane of Fernia. So you're not actually leaving Fernia at any point, but you do notice that there, there is a lingering sense as the portal closes behind you that there is something about this place that doesn't quite resonate with the planar energies of Fernia. Okay. So I guess once we're through, uh, I'll I'll sort of follow the group a little bit to t determine like who seems to be in charge. Uh, and as soon as I can ascertain that, uh, I would do a divine sense. Okay. That's right. So this is Takashi's first time in the Wandering Emporium. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, so then oh, I, I sort of forget health. Is the Demon Grinder functional at all, or is it just stuck in place? It's stuck in place. Okay. So first we have to go and find the mechanic, and hopefully she can drag or tow this to her shop, or at least get it moving temporarily to get it there. What was the mechanic's name? I forget. Holly. Hello. Um. <clears throat> All right. So how many that... how many soul coins do we have? <laughs> Just hoping we didn't leave them back on uh, Ewan's body. <laughs> uh, you guys would have uh, you you would have gotten that. Um, so 
So you have five and a half soul coins. No idea what Tal is going to charge for this. <laughs> so we should not stay in the spa in case we need them all. I imagine it will be most of our soul coins. One soul coin per person per night last time. We can go to the cheap place. They serve mediocre drinks, but the rooms are reasonably priced. And unlivably hot. That would be a problem. But that I wouldn't know about. <laughs> Sucks to suck is basically what Blade just said. <laughs> I'm okay with the uh, the cheap place. It's fine with me. So I, I start walking in the direction of the garage. Okay. So um, as you come upon the facility of the garage, you see that the large doors are wide open and you see a number of magmen splitting about back and forth between vehicles um some of them pounding out uh dents others seeming to work with uh wrenches or gears and things like that um <clears throat> you then uh hear a bong and you hear, and from that, you, you hear uh, Tallow's voice going, son of a bitch. <laughs> and she <laughs> angrily pulls herself out from beneath the another uh, demon grinder that she's working on. Or not a demon grinder, but an infernal war machine. Oh, it's you. Is your is what what can I do for you? Our uh, our vehicle has, I think, broken an axle uh, and is no longer able to move. And I'll ah. I'll describe I'll describe roughly like where it is, direction and distance from here. Uh, we need your help in fixing it. Ah, you need a repair and a tow. Yes. <laughs> Do you provide extra planet pulling oh. services? I'm I'm sorry, a tow? What? We have to pay a tow as well? How? Who gives the tow? No, no. The tow if is I, is the vehicle here. Is the vehicle here in the, the wandering right. and pouring? <laughs> yes. For you, I will take care of the tow. Uh, is no problem. Um, whose tow are you taking? Not, 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 no. not a digit. Transporting the vehicle to the garage. I, I spin like on my heel, and I'll look at Takash, and I'll say, <laughs> "What's that over there? Go find out." <laughs> yeah. Insight. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, you beat me ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's not going to work I just like a quick glance over the shoulder and make sure there's nothing over there <laughs> Because <laughs> I barely beat you. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that Takashi's dumpster is intelligence. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, I I will take care of the toe. Uh, Bashi, Zelda, get go cut it, and you hear her speaking in some language that is not recognizable and seems to be quite harsh. Mm -hmm. uh, and several of the magmans jump and uh, 
begin operating a uh, vehicle that looks like it is basically just a, a crane, um, an armored gigantic crane, <clears throat> and drives it from the garage at, towards the vehicle. Um, and Tallow says, it will take some time for me to assess the damage and determine appropriate repairs, uh, as well as fees uh, associated with those repairs. I, I will send one of, one of my uh, servants uh, to find you uh, once I am able to determine uh, next steps. Uh, will you be staying at the the Seven Golden Seals, or will you be staying somewhere else? We'll we will staying. be staying somewhere else. <clears throat> we'll be staying we'll... in the place with the uh, the place that uh, is is uh, less hospitable to my comrades. The random inn. Ah, yes, the random inn. Uh, good. Uh, I I will send one of my servants there then. Once once things are ready, ready. <clears throat> um. And then uh, Tallo uh, says, is there anything else that you may need of me? Interested in purchasing any weapons for your demon grinder once it is functional again, perhaps? Perhaps. I think we need to figure out what it will cost us to get it fixed before we worry about extras. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, So, as I said, I will reach out once I know more. Um, so if there is nothing else, I have many other machines that I must work on. Uh, so uh, I will find you soon. And Tallow turns around and goes back to work on one of the machines and instantly becomes frustrated and starts pounding it with her massive fists. <laughs> um, and then I turn back and I say, to Takash. To T O W, not T O E. <laughs> Indeed. And then I'm, I'm vaguely just, surprised I'm like... that it sounds like he can spell. <laughs> <laughs> he, but he's like just distracted by her banging on the machine. Like, is this doing anything? <laughs> Well, so if you stay for long enough and just watch, you you hear that it does spring to life after a few solid hits. <laughs> Skill unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> Takashi's got it figured out. It's like, ah, I could fix this next time. Um, if nobody else volunteered, absolutely. then I absolutely would uh, carry the soul coins, just so we know who has them. Okay. Um. <clears throat> but otherwise, I'm going to head to the random inn and probably just like sit around outside it for a while, because <laughs> uh, don't really need to eat or drink at the moment. Okay. And and you know, I'm optimistic that this will go quickly. <laughs> Maybe we don't even have to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> um so you uh so branded one is heading to the random inn. Uh is that where everybody else is going or did you guys have other things oh. that you wanted to do? Yeah, I'll be going to the random inn as well. That's we fun. can go around and do like a montage of Ewan's carousing. <laughs> yeah. Like a flashback. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when last we were here. <laughs> <laughs> All in slow motion, set to like happy, happier music. <laughs> yeah. Hopeful. Oh, that's right. The, I have to the now remove... Closed caption just says hopeful music. <laughs> um 
yeah, Tony, you, yeah, I, I have to take away your access to those special dossiers that you have for those other NPCs that you did the carousing for. Oh, I okay, sure. I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, are are all of you just kind of waiting outside, or are you going in, or? You said they had they had alcohol here. Mm, they have food and drink. I'll, I'll go see what kind of drink. <laughs> I Lux would know more. She stayed here last time. I'm just gonna hope that I have money. I don't know if I do. Could go for a mineral oil. Oh yeah, I got some money. We're good. <laughs> um. All right. So you Blade walk is, in. Blade is off to find some place where they'll oil them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So as you walk in, uh, it's it's fairly quiet inside the random inn. There's not many people that are there. Um. You see a, a couple of individuals that appear to be fiends. Um. But they are, you know, not bothering anybody. They seem to be just enjoying a meal or and, and kind of talking amongst themselves. Um, and then you you see some other individuals that are a little bit more familiar. Um, some some elvish, maybe you, you see you notice uh, humanoids with the pointed ears and. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, your your divine sense is going off like crazy because you're these are clearly fiends, um, and let's see. Oh, interesting. Uh. So yeah, you 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 notice a, a number of fiendish presences, um, the the ones that are obvious, mm -hmm. um, a couple of the more humanoid looking ones are also fiendish, uh, or or registering as fiendish, um, whether they are disguising themselves or. They were, that's really their true form. It's anybody's guess. But then there's a, a few individuals that do not register as uh, any kind of fiend, undead, or celestial. Okay. Seems good uh, to me. I'll just be keeping an eye on them fiendish ones. <clears throat> so, do you look for a table, or... Yeah, is there like a bar? bar? There is a bar. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go up to the bar. Blade will join him. Uh, can you drink? I can enjoy. I can enjoy the atmosphere. Plus, if they've got the, uh, well, this is a place that serves many kinds of patrons. I'm sure they have something uh, for my old bones. <laughs> a, a drunken warforged I would love to see. <laughs> Let's look for the barkeep. <laughs> Where's he at? Uh, yeah, so uh, a large ogre comes out uh, and and you know, carrying a couple of kegs in either arm uh, from the, the basement and sets them behind the bar and then sees you and comes over and says and, and looks at Blade and Takash what do you have? Um, I'd like some of your finest alcohol please and whatever might get him drunk do you have grease? Will that do it? Uh, I 
I I think I can get something whipped up for you, maybe, but and he points at Blade, but that'll take a little bit of time. Uh but you're gonna say we, we don't serve his for? kind. <laughs> 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 What what kind of alcohol are you looking for? Do you want spirits? Are you looking for wine? Are you looking for demon ichor ale? I mean, what? The spirits what? is fine. Thank you. Do you want clear <clears throat> or do you want clouded? <laughs> Bring me your favorite. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. Uh, I, I suppose I did. <laughs> and so, uh, puts down uh, a pint glass and completely fills the pint glass with this clear liquid, um, and then pushes it over to you. He says. A full pint of this spirit is usually what gets me. Understood. I'll take some sips. <laughs> what kind of currency do you carry? Uh, coin? What Gold? kind? Gold? I'll take gold if that's what you have. Uh, that glass uh, will be... Uh, and you see the ogre kind of working overtime trying to convert uh, to what gold coins might be. Uh, and, <laughs> and, then, and then the ogre realizes, wait, wait, what size coins? Show Ringular. me the currency. <laughs> Regular size coins. I've learned you can't take anything for granted here. All kinds come through. <laughs> oh, so the uh, <laughs> could I estimate what this amount of clear liquor would cost in gold? Um. Well, it would probably only be maybe a silver piece. For this, okay. I will, uh, I'll, I'll pull out a gold coin and sit it down. Like, where I'm from, this amount of, this spirit would cost this much. Just a whole gold piece. Well, around here, we typically trade in soul coins. Gold ain't as worth as much here. You got some practical use in magic, but other than that, it's not desired. So, if that is the size of coin, you will need 20 more. Do you have no, I got this, Takash. <laughs> He's yeah. just like trying to do the math and his impot. He's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blade looks He's, trying to, he's Takashi's... trying to figure out where the math came. Like, how did we get there? He's yeah. he lung was totally <laughs> lost. He sees the circuits up uh circuits malfunctioning and, and pulls out his uh <laughs> His co his coin purse, uh, and it's like I've got this. You just enjoy your drink. Indeed, I will. I will. I will. Thank you. I will attempt to return the favor at some point. Um, and then uh, the ogre. So you you produce the coins. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so the ogre counts them out, uh, and and then takes them and puts them in a pouch on on his 
uh, belt. And then says, for you, uh, it'll take a minute. Just give me a moment. Will you be paying with gold too? <clears throat> I plan on it. Uh, for what you want, it'll be uh, three gold pieces. Three? Three. Very well. And I mean, you want grease, so. The I'm hottest gonna, grease. I'm going to get you grease. <laughs> Just sticks a label into a grease, into the grease trap. Uh, actually, yeah, he's going to the griddle in the back and uh. scraping it off the top of it, <laughs> putting it into a pot, heating it up until it all, you know, congeals, and then will come out it with with it in a in a glass, looking just just like you know, really cloudy bacon grease. With bits of char all in, in yeah, sprinkled in there. <laughs> yeah, I imagine like as like it would come out, like you just like you can't you can't like sit near it because it's just like <laughs> it smells so awful. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pungent. Yeah. So he would produce three coins and he'd be awaiting his hot grease. Uh, so, yeah, the ogre comes out and brings it and, and takes the coins. Anything else you need? We are good for now. What about your friends just standing over there in the back? Oh, they're awkward and weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well... They can't just loiter in here. They gotta pay for something at some point. <laughs> Understood. Blade, Blade's at some gonna, point, they shall. Blade's gonna debate on getting them cups of hot grease just so that they... <laughs> <laughs> no, Blade, it's like, are you gonna drink that? Are you gonna drink that? <laughs> 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 Guys, you gotta get you gotta try this. Oh, you don't want it? I'll take it. <laughs> um so then uh Melodia branded one Lux, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you you uh... the awkward weirdos, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I, I am still outside. Uh, I I am just lost in thought at this point. Okay. Uh, there's probably and, and I don't know where tables I don't outside. Know where. Like there probably is a patio area if you want to sit down, or or uh, like a bench or something. Yeah, I'd sit on the bench, and I I don't know where Trebek would be. Oh yeah, Trebek probably <laughs> would have. Uh came in with you guys and uh, probably ordered something a little bit less potent than either Blade or Takash. <laughs> I'm not trying to drink this thing fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it... A wise man once told me, pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is potent um like Boilet water ask uh oh even even worse <laughs> like this is some spiritus level stuff <laughs> um for those of you not familiar with spiritus ever clear mm -hmm. <laughs> um so melodia Lux, what are you guys doing? Um, I was hanging out with, outside with the branded one, but uh, yeah, probably just chilling in the patio right now because I didn't know if they were dragon friendly on the inside. So, hanging out with Pantone on the outside. Okay. 
<laughs> um, does I've actually never run into a D and D inn that does not accept pets, <laughs> but I guess it makes sense that maybe some wouldn't. <laughs> Lux, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to go inside and then just uh, have a seat by myself in the corner. Okay. Uh, are you so you you come in, you find a somewhat isolated corner of the place, um, and, and you sit down. It's fairly quiet in this part of the, the tavern. Um, anything in particular that you're doing? Um, I'm just, I'm spotting, I'm trying to see if there's anybody I recognize in here. And once I feel that I don't recognize anybody, then I'm fine. I'm fine if they kill them. So I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody that you can recognize, uh, so you're sitting there by yourself if, for a few moments and then uh suddenly uh seemingly like surprising you uh is is a woman that looks at you with very kind eyes she, she appears to be maybe wearing an apron and she has a rag so um, she may have been like wiping the tables down, but you didn't see her with that. You just she just kind of uh, sidles up next to you very silently and says, "Oh, hello. Um, are are you sitting by yourself then?" I look around and uh, yes. Um. This is the how the woman looks, by the way. She has uh, platinum white, almost silvery hair with very vibrant purple eyes. And she definitely has a sense about her of calm. And as she speaks, there's there's kind of a really pleasant sort of melody to the way that she enunciates each word it kind of sounds like almost like the ringing of a bell like poetry um, yeah uh and she says um is is there anything that i can get for you oh not right this minute Do you mind if I sit with you for a minute? I, I I just get this sense about you. You seem troubled. Well, look where we are. <laughs> We're in the random inn. Yes, but look at the people in the random inn. They're all troubled. I suppose to uh, an extent that's true, but even compared to them, you seem quite troubled. Oh, it's nothing that living a long life won't get you. Well, I've always thought that living a long life would allow for many different kinds of adventures. Yes, that's true. You seem like you've experienced some some pretty terrible things. Oh, uh, I'm sure compared to others, not really. Well, 
if you must compare yourself to others, then things always seem worse or bleaker or feel guilty for the blessings that you have. It's always leads to some kind of distress. I don't well, mean to pry, but you seem like just so weary. Oh, you could say that. What brings you here? Why are you in the random inn? I work here. I come to, I suppose, just to pay the bills. One of the things I really enjoy about this work is I get to talk to a lot of different people, a lot of interesting people. But this is a pretty hard place to get by, Fernia. Lots of people have their war stories. That they do. I suppose you suppose you have some war stories. Yeah, you could say that. Well, I really wish that there was something that I could leave you with, a kind word or a gesture that might ease some of your trouble. And she she goes to reach out and kind of put her hand over yours, um, if if you would allow it. Uh, let's see. I gotta think of outside lights. I, I can't meta this. Okay, yes, I will. Okay. Um, and as as she touches yours, you feel this really pleasant warmth coming from her. Uh, that seems to spread through your hand and kind of radiate throughout you. Then, um. It's it's kind of offering a bit of relief, uh, whether this is just the, the kindness of a stranger and a gentle touch in a place where you've experienced only pain and agony or something more is, is difficult to say for certain. But um, she looks into your eyes and, and she says, you know, it, it will get better. In times like this, I really try to seek comfort in the idea that there is some kind of plan, some kind of greater universal truth or some sort of, I don't know, some kind God that makes it all worth it that there that there's there's a reason for the things that we go through so how yeah. much of fernia have you seen oh quite a lot i've been here working at the random inn for a while all kinds come in this place so outside of the random inn where have you been Um, there are a few settlements around Fernia. Uh, I've seen the F Fort Fingerbones with, uh, the warlord in charge of there, Mad Maggie. 
she is uh, a dark creature. Um, but you know, just nothing really that stands out in particular. Are you from here? You don't seem like you're from here. No, I'm not from here. Yeah. I I suspect or I, I I bet you're from a place that has lots of different types of settlements, lots of places that seem special. Yeah, you could say so. Around here everything's kind of the same. There's not a whole lot that's special here. You can find some things that are special. But they're usually not the places. It's usually opportunities or individuals. But I want to go back to the idea of there being some greater purpose or greater force that makes this all worthwhile and I'm just wondering do you have anything like that that you believe in okay outside of character I do want to say that I am immune to disease or poison so when she touched me <laughs> just in case I know. fair enough okay good um try and poison ivy that shit <laughs> <laughs> Also immune to kindness and conversation. So, <laughs> cost and efficiency. Yeah. Um... <laughs> what did I'm sorry? What you say? Do I believe in some something good or something? Yeah, words to there, that effect. Is there anything that gives your life meaning? Anything that you trust in beyond yourself? No. Wow. You seem quite lost then. Maybe I'm right where I should be. Maybe you are. You know, sometimes when things get really difficult when you've been through a lot of terrible things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, when, when you've been through so many terrible things, it can help to at the very least keep company of of friends. Do you have any friends? No. No friends. Only in spirit. You say that as Blade starts walking your direction with <laughs> a cup of grease. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by friends in spirit? Well, Blade, you know, Blade's like, who's that ghost on your shoulder? <laughs> you know, the, their memories. I'm sure their spirits aren't around. They would have sense enough to leave. So, you've experienced some great losses. Oh, well, you know, they're losses. But everybody has them, so. I suppose everybody will know what it is to lose, but that's different, isn't it? You've lost much. You could say that. So, I... 
I have to ask, what is it that gives your life purpose then? And for me, the thing that keeps me going is the idea that with my job, it's hard work, but I get to meet some interesting people. I get to hear so many stories of adventures that I'll never get to go on. But also, at least I hope that by offering a kind ear, that it can unburden the people that I am that I see along the way. What about you? What is it that gives your life meaning? What gets you up in the morning and keeps you going? That's a good question. Knowing that one, knowing that I'll be joining those spirits one day. Okay. So the reunion is what you're looking forward to. But well, who knows what kind of reunion it will be. Considering where we are, it probably won't be pleasant. I suppose that is something to look forward to, but... It's not really a reason to keep going. I mean, it sounds like you're just waiting for an end. Well, with every beginning, there is an end. Yeah, but hopefully... We get to have some choice in how that end takes place and what it is that we leave behind. What are you hoping to leave behind? Dust. Come now. You can't just leave behind dust. You must have touched some lives. You must be important to someone. No. So, <laughs> what if you had somebody that relied upon you what if what if you had somebody that needed you i would feel sorry for them why because they would just become a spirit like everyone else you blame yourself i guess or i could just call it fate well, fate would indicate or hint at a greater design, that there's a reason for the things that happen. If this is fate, then what is it that the design has in store for you? What if I know? What would you like it to have in store for you? What what do you think could make this all worth it, I suppose? Conversation to end. Um <laughs> I don't know. 
I haven't thought about that. Wow. You can see uh, the the woman as as she looks upon you. Her her eyes begin to kind of tear. You know, I I have met a lot of people in my time, but rarely have I encountered so much pain in a single person. You've really been through the ringer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Lux, I I do hope that you find some purpose in your life, some meaning. Sometimes finding something to fight for, something to care for, that can that can do a lot to keep us going. Well, I hope you never lose your uh, naive optimism. <laughs> I suppose it is somewhat naive, but I like to think of it as hopeful. At that point, you realize, wait a minute, she knows your name. Yeah, I, I picked that up, yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to ignore that. I don't want to start a fight here in the random <laughs> end. This is a trap. Do it, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. I got everybody all liquored up. This would oh. be easy pickets. <laughs> Lux, I... I really hope that you are able to find the peace that you are... that has been kept for you for so long... from you for so long. And I, I do hope that those spirits that you long to be reunited for that you can know their presence and that they are watching over you they are still around in their own way well i know what kind of campaign i'm in and that's not going to happen so sorry um so she she squeezes your hand uh and and you feel an even greater sense of comfort uh, and you and then there's a uh, something from the bar one of the patrons gets real rowdy and uh, has smashed a glass in response to Takashi's drinking song uh, causing the ogre to become very upset and when you look back the the girl is gone. Oh, and, thank God! And in in the seat where she was is a strange looking creature. Um, Is it Solomon's pet? <laughs> um, and and it looks at you, and you get a sense of familiarity. <clears throat> uh, 
Is it the sloth? <laughs> or not the sloth, the fucking koala. Like, transformed him out. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's evolved into his next form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, uh, Takash, I have uh, something to send you. I'm going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> a weird spirit animal. <laughs> this is what Mike thinks Lux's spirit animal animal would look like. <laughs> <laughs> How could you ignore that? <laughs> I'm just looking right. at this thing going, it's got 13 temp HP. I think it. <laughs> at the very least. I it's like how its face like comes into like a sphincter. It looks like some Rick and Morty creature. <laughs> it, it, it makes me think that like it's a it's a video game character that the head didn't render, but the eyes did <laughs> on the body. So it's the body, empty Ooh. head, two eyes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maddox is making a guest appearance. <laughs> Hello, Maddox. Um, so the the creature is probably only about four inches tall, um, and it it hops onto the table, and and begins kind of suspiciously kind of looking at you and and kind of approaching kind of <clears throat> like it doesn't know whether or not it should doesn't know whether you will be kind to it okay does this creature look do uh, I don't have anything like nature? Again, Gosh, I, am, I am I am immune to poison and disease. So sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a drug induced hallucination. Okay, me. and I can let's see, yeah, and I can use an action to keep myself from being charmed. So. You are not currently charmed, so far as you know. <laughs> um, I will uh, extract myself from the herd, from the group of people, um, and make my way over to them. <laughs> Who was that woman? Oh, you mean them, me, and this thing yeah and where did that come from it, i don't know it appeared when she left i don't know who the woman was i think she was just a barmaid oh she was certainly not that well she was working at the bar is she still here she is not also to cash one little bit of information hmm Take your pen. 
Okay. Got it. <clears throat> ah, well, that woman was certainly the only shining light I've seen in this place since we've got here. Since I've got here. I don't know about you. Definitely some celestial type. But the. Why would she leave a f that? Do I? Does it look familiar to me? Does, can I tell what it is? Mm. I yeah. You you would you would guess this. For for what it's worth, Lux would a hundred percent know. That Solomon absolutely would adopt this thing immediately. It would be his. <laughs> <laughs> he and he and Walla Walla the koala would be best friends. <clears throat> All right. Oh. The real question is, are they related? Is what related? If... It's weird. She was definitely some sort of angel. Uh -huh. Well, that is a fiend. This is a fiend? Quite. Well, well I mean, it's hardly a fiend yet, but uh, it's definitely capable of becoming very fiendish, I suppose. Oh. Should I move out of the way so you can squish it? <laughs> it hardly seems worth it. It just got here. It's probably brand new. Well, that way we'd save it the, the trouble it's about to, to bring. <laughs> Maybe we could direct that trouble. What? Point the trouble into our enemies. <laughs> if he, we know Belganog wasn't going to be permanently dead forever. He was just going to come back in some other form. Ta da! <laughs> 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 I can can I stick my hand out? What's well, how tall is it? It's like four inches. Stick my finger out, see if it will hop on my finger. Um it kind of uh waddles or like waddle hops forward to the finger, kind of smells it. It rubs the finger a little bit, and then it kind of looks at you.
Ah, uh, so. I'd like a Takash. Well, if you think it'll be worth something, you can have it. Why don't you hang on to it for me? Uh, no. <laughs> I think it's for the best. I don't think so. I think it's for the best. If I hang on to it, it certainly will become a fiend and probably kill all of you and spare me. That's very, very specific. It is very specific. <laughs> it seems so specific it is not likely to happen. <laughs> or I'll grow attached to it and it'll be it'll be brutally murdered and I'll get to watch it. Oh, that is always a threat. So it is best left here where you can have it. Or maybe Blade would like to have it. Maybe it likes grease. As I look over at Blade. <laughs> <laughs> you, he kind of looks over at you and it's seeing like he's like checking up to see what like Takash is doing, and you see like you see like rivulets coming down. <laughs> the grease he's he's noticed that the grease that he sent over to the table hasn't been touched yet. Mmm, <laughs> tastes warm. <laughs> <laughs> it seems quite obvious that it's supposed to go with you uh, I feel like you should keep it uh, it is not quite obvious the timing of it was absolutely perfect Remember whenever I, I said that there's always got to be dramatic times. This is obviously one of them. This is meant to be something. Has to be. Right. And if it's still free will, I will walk away. <laughs> and I get up and leave. I grab uh, it. <laughs> I mean, unless it does something, I don't know. Well, as, as luck go, goes to leave, it begins waddle hopping to towards Lux onto the ground and, and follows her. Do I notice it's following me? Yeah. I just turn around and say, look, if, if you get squashed or eaten by a random patron, it's not my fault. <laughs> And I keep walking. Keeps following. Okay. And I go outside. And then, uh, not long after that, one of the magmans comes seeking you guys out. Uh, it notices the branded one and Lux and Melodia first, since you guys are standing outside of the random end. And it says, All right, uh, Talo is uh, ready for you guys. Thank Come you, on. Wolf. We have to collect the rest of our group, but we'll head over to the garage immediately. All right, you know where it is. And he runs off. And I point behind Lux and say, what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would like kneel down to look at it from like a respectful distance, like at least three feet or so. Mm -hmm. uh, it So as you look at it, it, it looks like there's a sort of intelligence within it it's it's at least in the way that it is observing you and observing lux um it, it's and and kind of just the look in its eyes um but yeah that's what you get when you look at it 
examine it. Why is it following you? I don't know. Takash like chugs the rest of his drink and darts out. Well, are there other things like this in there? Is it some sort of pest from this world? It appeared after some barmaid spoke to me. Step outside, and there it is. Like there it did is. You, Amazing. Did you agree to pay for it? Is this no, like I didn't. the Walla Walla situation? No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's something this person left. Because if this barmaid was some sort of fiend and you made a deal. No, well. That's certainly not what happened. It was definitely happened? a celestial. It was quite well, it is... blinding, in fact. I don't know, don't know how it, nobody else noticed. Uh, you may, given your history, be able to see things differently than we do. So do you know what this creature is? Oh, definitely not. But it was... Uh, um, well, the small one... I, I, I get, No, I don't know what the small one is. I can tell it is a fiend. And it was delivered to Lux by a Celestial? I... The deliverance is un unknown. All I know is she disappeared, and it appeared. That's it. And Lux refuses to keep him. And I vote that we do. If it's a fiend, though... Look at it. it. Seems... Risky to keep. Well, obviously, <laughs> first of all, many fiends can polymorph themselves into adorable shapes if they want to. <laughs> but they can't mask their power, their aura. I'm not sure that's true in the case of every fiend. That's I don't know why. I don't know why a celestial would leave this in its wake if not deliver it. I don't know. In any event. For the moment. Maybe we can just run to the garage and lose this thing. <laughs> so that doesn't uh, seem like it would be very fast. That's a second vote for not keeping. Any others? I thought you were going to say run to the garage and run it over. That seemed to work pretty good the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. And, and with that, I would say, hmm, that's a good point. <laughs> and I, I'll like look at it and cock my head and say, could this be like a new form for your friend? Looks to be feathered. I've never heard of a baby frock. So maybe this is what they look like. That uh, That doesn't make any sense. I mean... Is that still true here, where demons and devils will reconstitute? Mm hmm No. They won't be in the same form, and they won't have the same memories, but their essence will still remain. Mm hmm I mean, that might explain why this thing is following you. And why it was delivered to you, since Belganog seems to have been very unusual for Vrock if it was questioning the nature of its, its existence and its purpose, maybe some celestial took pity on the unusual existential crisis it was having and decided to give this new form a better chance by not having it be raised in the rigmarole of the blood war. So it, when it dies, it can just... It reforms and comes back again many demons or devils or extra planar creatures do if they die in a plane they're not native to I will say that Lux you do recall a conversation when you first met Belganag because suicide was brought up as an option 
uh, for him to end his sort of sense that nothing mattered and that all was violence. And he did mention that uh, it would be pointless because he would just come back and he would be eventually thrown back into the meat grinder and just have everything happen all over again. So while they're all arguing and <laughs> debating about resurrection, I'm going to go collect the uh, belligerent uh, blade from inside from too much grease intake and carry him outside. <laughs> I just, I'm just imagining just empty, just pint glasses all around him, just in a puddle of grease as I <laughs> slip around a little bit, but eventually get him outside. Yeah, yeah, you see, uh, you see that there are uh, uh, four uh, like five cups of gr empty grease around him. <laughs> they're all empty. Uh, he's got some just kind of like splattered all over. Yeah. Trying to pick a yeah. fight with something. Yeah. The ogre does mention that it keeps a barrel of grease that it saved to cut its soup that it makes. <laughs> so. Oh, oh the grease the is of getting cold. Where have you been? <laughs> I think you've had enough. We'll uh, the car's ready, so we need to get going. the The, the murder bus is ready to go. So, oh. grab your grab one for the road, and we'll we'll keep on going. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking like one arm over the shoulder, and I'm lugging them out as best I can. But yeah, and meet up, meet you guys out in front. Probably still debating over yeah. over what you're going to name this thing. Uh, Blade is feeling very oiled up right now. <laughs> he has never run smoother. <laughs> and when he walks out the door, um, it's got to be pure. <laughs> he sees, he sees the, he sees this creature. What the hell is that? And when you walk out the door, the first thing you hear is, "I recommend as its new name, Falconext." Since he's Bel the next Belganog. <laughs> this is well, this is Belganog. Uh, we don't really know. What's the next one? Is it next to Belg? Well, if there's one after this, and this is Belga next, maybe next to next. <laughs> hmm. Maybe Belga beauty. I mean, look at it. It has form, elegance. I mean, it's cute now, but who knows what it will look like when it's bigger. Well, we can enjoy it. If we befriend it now, then when it gets bigger and uglier, then uh, we will be in good hands. Well... I will be curious to see how this plays out. I, I reverse my vote. Maybe we should take it with us. Good to see reason. I mean, I'll be honest. Uh, things that Lux is in charge of don't have a great track record, so it might not survive the day anyway. Oh, this is Lux's. And it was not for were, Lux. I didn't know you were looking for a new pet. Uh, it is. No, no, it is not mine. Mm. It just happened to be in the same area I was in. Blade raises a Purely good point, though. If I understand some of the stories I'm told, there's a pet store in town. If we need extra coin to fix the infernal machine, we could always just sell it to the pet store. <clears throat> Do what you want. But the Walla Walla does need a friend. Ever since Solomon passed away, I've been taking care of it. and uh, He might end up eating it. Uh, to be fair, Walla Walla may claw this thing to death. Bigger than, than this little thing. Walla Walla seems to be quite vicious. Yeah, Walla Walla is like a foot tall or so, maybe a foot and a half. This thing is only a few inches tall. Oh. But you're right. It would also be, you know, perhaps 
some nights entertainment to watch them fight to the death. <laughs> if they meet on neutral ground, they may oh. uh, they may hit it off. That's a good point. We should make sure to throw her in the back of the war machine when we get to the, get there. But we should go s- check in on it now. I'm sure she has at least a price. Uh, and we'll find out how long we'll be stuck here while she fixes the vehicle. Very well. Wouldn't it be some shit if, like, she didn't expect the fucking koala to be there and it got out? Sure, we could always sell the koala back to the pet store as well. <laughs> if we need some extra coin. It's a good idea, Takash. <laughs> I, I understand. The koala is a spiteful creature. It's okay. <laughs> so I will stand back up and start walking towards the garage. Alright, everybody else head into the garage? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so while you head off, the the little creature continues to uh, hobble hop its way behind, following behind you as, as best it can. Um, How fast is it? Uh, it's struggling to keep up. Boy, uh, we're all, we're all slow pokes relative we're all slow pokes relative to Lux. Yeah. So she could very easily escape this thing if she wanted to. Oh yeah. Seeing seeing this thing attempt to struggle and follow us, like Blade will pick it up and like put it upon his shoulder. It looks at you with suspicious eyes, but it allows it. <laughs> This will be faster. Uh, so you guys get to the garage, and Tallow is there waiting for you. Ah, good. So I have examined your board machine. It is not good. The damage is quite extensive. It will be some time to repair. Uh, perhaps as much as a week. Well, it takes as long as it takes, I suppose. The the cost is going to be uh, five soul coins. Um, There is a possibility that I can expedite the the repair uh but will co- it will increase the cost uh, since it, rather than uh simply reforging the axle into single piece uh i could remove an axle from another vehicle would increase the speed of the job but then I have to do this for other machine. We'll we'll double the price. We're really not in a big hurry to get back to hell. Is there is there uh, in exchange for knocking price down? Could I? Uh, is there is there a worker that you could use hands with? Grunt work, manual labor. Something that would be uh, fit for my kind to do. Uh, For the number of soul coins you are seeking to expense, the the work would... You would need to work far longer than the week you would take to repair in order to make the appropriate wages. Sounds good. I mean, I think we will uh <clears throat> I don't think I don't think it's prudent for us to try to uh 
pay for the expedited version of this. I think we will just have to tough it out for a week. But um, if there is any work he could perform that would count against the amount charged, that would probably be helpful for us. It would leave us with more soul coins that we may need to spend on other things. Even just a little bit. I do not expect uh, full. Do not expect to uh, make very much. Maybe knock off one soul coin or half a soul coin. Uh, so Tallow kind of considers for a moment. Uh, and she says... I don't normally do refunds, but if you would like a more speedy repair, uh, I could accept some of your armaments from the war machine to subsidize the pay payment. Well, I don't know that we would want to give up on the weapons on the war machine, so we can afford the five soul coins. <clears throat> and I understand if you can't actually employ Blade in your shop on such short notice. Is there a place here for uh, uh, is there a place here that I could that is looking for work that they are aware of. Place that needs grease taken care of. <laughs> I am great at pounding grease. <laughs> I mean, a fair point is if we're going to be here for a week anyway, if there is anyone looking for a group of seasoned adventurers to help on some task or other. <laughs> It might be good to make their acquaintance and see if we are a good fit. Um, so Tallow considers that for a moment. Well, aside from Master Hawkins, who always has work opportunities, the only one that would be willing to perhaps consider uh, what it is you offer is Fetala. Where could we find this Fetala? They run the... I, I suppose you could call it a... Uh, an exchange of currency, a, a, a place where you can also deliver items, uh, a courier service. Well, we should check in with Master Hawkins first, but that is, uh, thank you, that is a very good lead. Yeah, no problem. It would give uh, us something to do during the week. I will begin the repairs. Uh, if I am able to finish them more quickly, uh, I certainly will uh, see what I can do. We appreciate that. Well, I will leave you to it. <laughs> and as I walk by the little forward creature, I will say, this is your fault, Belganog. <laughs> <laughs> bad bad get out he just kind of cocks his head at you <laughs> so who is this Master Hawkins uh, he seems to be the uh probably as close to mayor of this settlement as there might possibly be. This The settlement itself is on top of an enormous creature, a, a giant lumbering beast. 
uh, he seems to be the owner of the beast, and so therefore the settlement is his in a sense. Though he mostly seems to stick to his spa, which is why it's so unbelievably expensive at a soul coin per person per day. <laughs> absolutely. But we can get free food and drinks from him. So if you're can sick we? of the rations I can magically create, you will quickly get sick of his little blue cans and oatmeal moon pie things. <laughs> <laughs> a moon pie very curious I must try it it's like this world's version of Lembas bread <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now I, I, I wonder if Takash is like which moon because Eberron has 12 of them <laughs> it's the different flavors <laughs> But it would make sense to me if we would go uh, go and talk to Master Hawkins first before this other person. Yeah. If only because maybe we can, uh, in, in lieu of payment in soul coins, we might be able to get another token to come back here. Although we will be effectively out of soul coins after we pay for the repair, so... Yes, we will need more find, soul coins. We'll would need also to find be good. some way to. Uh, uh, we we'll need to find some way to to uh, replenish our stock. So Can we should probably head to the spa then. <clears throat> All right. So you head to the seven golden seals. Um, and as you enter, you're greeted by one of the attendants. And they, uh, in a very pleasant voice, say, Hello. Welcome to the Seven Golden Seals, where everything is wonderful. How can we help you today? Uh, we were hoping to speak with Master Hawkins. Oh, uh, Master Hawkins is not in right now. He's out on a very important business deal. Perhaps can I take a message? Um, sure. I don't know. You you can tell him that Lux's group was back in town, and uh, we were hoping to find him to see if there's any tasks he needs performed as we did help him out last time we were here with uh, healing this beast that we're on. Oh, you guys are the ones that helped Wilfred. Yes. He's but we're not sure. Much what... better, by the way. That's good. But we don't necessarily know what work might need to be done if anything we were just checking since we're going to be here for apparently a, about a week however not being filled with coin we will be staying at the random inn rather than your spa oh well that's sad to hear that you won't be staying with us uh, I'll certainly give the message to Master Hawkins when he returns but there's no telling how long he may be gone for that's fine Thank you for your time. Of course. Have a wonderful day. So we go find the other person, <laughs> the courier service. Um, so uh, some of you may recall that um, Fatala, uh, as, as his name is, without Talos, uh, accent is the same creature that possesses a fiend coin who you were uh, perhaps, I think you and led the charge with kind of trying to test out um, the seeing the soul coin when uh, with one of the lackeys or one of the attendants there so you uh, find yourself going to the courier 
and there's a small reddish creature with a row of horns uh, over its head and wings draped over his shoulders. Uh, and he says, Oh, it's you guys. Have what do you met? want? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. In any event, we are here because we were wondering whether or not uh, Fatala would have had would have any work for a group of adventurers who have spent plenty of time in Fernia itself. We have a week that we will be here, so if there is any work you or he might have for us, ah, we'd be interested. You wish to work for Fatala. Interesting. Yes. And what kind of work are you willing to do? Do you need any grease cleaning up? <laughs> no. Oh. Well, aren't you a courier system? Uh, company? We can deliver letters. We can... Packages? We can sort letters. We can... Uh, we, are adept at... we are adept at killing things. That may threaten any deliveries you may have. Now that, that is something worth doing. We do have some high-risk deliveries that need to get to where they're going without <clears throat> any kind of interference. Why are they so deadly? Well, Bernia is well known to have roving bands of warlords all vying for power. Easily, one of the objects that we deliver can provide a, a great deal of resources for any would-be warlord that would want to steal it. But, more importantly for this business, Vitala takes great pride in his reputation. And so, he makes great effort to ensure that none of his deliveries miss their miss their mark. So warlords? Yes. Yeah, we might want to skip on that. Last time we dealt with them, they kicked our ass. That's when we were fighting the warlords themselves. I don't assume... We're going to be asked to get into direct confrontations with one of the warlords. But there are roving bands out there that otherwise waylay travelers. We've all experienced that, and we've handled it and survived. Well, um, and then with that, there's uh, something on the desk where this creature is sitting uh in an orb begins to buzz and kind of glow with pulses of yellow light and he stops he looks at it and he says oh uh uh, uh fatala will see you where do please, we go please come this way and then I will whisper to Lux, uh, try, to sell us, try to sell us a little bit better than we got our asses kicked. <laughs> if you want to live here, you're going to need coin. Okay. Actually, have we have we seen any homeless people? Are there homeless people in uh, the Wandering Emporium? <laughs> no. You know what that means? It means they kick all the homeless people out. <laughs> yeah, they're taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you come into a very opulent hall that seems to be much larger than the space that you imagined would be contained within the building that you're in uh and at the end of uh a mar the marble floor and ivory columns is uh, a large desk 
and an individual sitting behind it with kind of his fingers together uh, and wearing robes that cover much of his face. And this is what he looks like. I don't know. It's not let me show it. All right, let me refresh. It's weird. It's not letting me show. I can see it. Yeah, I got it. Oh. Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, so that's what Fatala looks like. Um, with those black robes that seem to be covered in, in sigils uh, and dark gray mottled skin. And he says... Mm -hmm. Does he look undead? Because he looks undead in the picture. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, that's a pretty good assumption. He he definitely doesn't look well by by human standards. Well, I'm uh, checking anyway. <laughs> Tikash, with your divine sense, he detects as fiendish. Okay. Uh, and he says, "I see." Or rather hear that you are looking for work. We are. And that you are willing to sell your services in aptitude for violence? That is our primary skill. I am good at drinking grease. But he's also known as Blade the Destroyer, not necessarily only of Greece. And how much coin are you seeking? To be honest, we are here because our infernal war machine with which we were traversing Vernia has broken down and we have a week until it is repaired. So we don't have, we have enough money to pay for the repairs, but in the intervening week, rather than lose our edge uh, or sit around doing nothing, we figured it would be for the best to try to earn a little coin as that may be needed in the future. There's no set amount that we need, however. I suppose what we would ask for would depend on the nature and the dangers of the missions involved. Ideally, we would want something that would keep us occupied for no more than a week. Although, obviously, that might depend on how quickly we get things done. I have a competitor who has been a thorn in my side for quite some time. I would like to hire you to turn him into less competition. I should add, we don't necessarily want to get embroiled in breaking any laws here in the Wandering Emporium as we would like to return. Uh, if your competitor is not here, that might be... My competitor is not here. I have a very special arrangement with Master Hawkins. It allows me some privileges here that are not given lightly to others. But do not fear. My business is not here in the Wandering Emporium. What can you tell us about this competitor? Where can we find him? What? Yeah. How many needs how, are you breaking? What is right, how, how permanent a solution do you want to your problem? 
Are you looking for us to kill kill him? Yes. Uh, then yes, as, as much as you can tell us about this competitor and where to find him would be useful. So, he operates out of a settlement not far from where the war band of Zeriel sits. At this settlement... He enjoys the safety that Serial's warband provides him. I don't know if he has any direct relationship or arrangement with Zeriel herself, but he has not only attempted to undercut me in the price of services, but he has sent his own minions to sabotage my shipments so that they are delayed or even never reach their destination and I just simply cannot have that in terms of who he is what he looks like that is a little less clear he has done a very good job of hiding himself from my divinations that would allow me to see upon him. All I know is that he has eyes that leave a trail of black smoke. That is quite a defining feature, if I can say. Is he otherwise humanoid? Eyes could mean a beholder or a person or something else. That I cannot say. As I said, his divinations are quite powerful. It took a lot for me to get that much information. It was quite costly. Well, allow us to discuss it for a minute. Sure. Pull everyone and huddle up. Sounds reasonable to me. We're going to have to figure out how to get there since we don't have a vehicle. Right, although Zariel's name has come up before, which to me sounds like some sort of providence is at work in this. We may need to find Zariel anyway to figure out where this little knowledge demon of hers is and this will be somewhat near to it I'm a little concerned that maybe this creature is allied with Zariel but we still may be able to gather valuable intelligence and it's Fernia after all I don't know that Zariel will be upset if we killed an ally of hers inconvenienced maybe if they're allies at all. And the point of the matter is we we will need coin in the future. This sounds yeah. like a really yeah. dangerous mission. I don't know what to charge. I don't know what the going rate is for such services. But it, <clears throat> perhaps we can at least ask for the five soul coins that it was going to cost us to get the vehicle repaired. I yeah, not knowing the exchange rate, I, I would, I would think it should be more, but Much I don't more. know. Yeah, to replace an axle on a car versus putting a hit on someone in the real world. I'm not saying this is the real world. I think it would be a little <laughs> bit more expensive, but <laughs> I, I expect two, three hundred coins at least for a job like that. Uh, so Literally three... eliminating. Literally eliminating an entire uh, threat to your business. I mean, and then from is so this, from go ahead. Is or like I, I know we don't know for sure, and um, they don't know either. But 
my concern is this is going to be in the midst of a war camp. And just to get at this person, we're going to have to finagle our way into a war camp. And I've already got it figured out. Okay. We're, we're solid. We're good then. Now, all we got to do is we just got to accompany a caravan of uh, our patrons here. Uh, delivery. Wait for it to be attacked. Surely there will be some insignias or uniforms that we can use. We just take them and use those to get in. Seen it in a million heist movies. Full proof. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> All we need is a. We need to accompany a shipment, and when the uh, the robbers walk past the closet, we grab them and drag <laughs> them into the closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we walk out wearing their clothes. Exactly. <laughs> what I, I I haven't actually traded that much in soul coins, but I mean, from what I heard. Two or three hundred soul coins could get you a, an arsenal of thousands of magical items. <laughs> so perhaps a happy medium, a hundred. <laughs> uh, I would suggest that we rely on uh, our resident negotiator, Blade, to get us the best price possible. <laughs> That worked out real well for Solomon. <laughs> so this is in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I can negotiate. <clears throat> okay, and let's go. Have you made a decision? You may want to, you may want to remove your the adorable creature from your shoulder. It'll look more intimidating. Uh, uh, he he like puts out his finger so it'll like step onto it. Uh, On the other hand, I guess it is a hell beast. So like, hold on, yeah, yeah. Belga next, give us your biggest roar. <laughs> he just stares at you. <laughs> Come on, little guy. Come on. We'll get there. <laughs> it, it just jumps off of Blade's shoulder uh, straight to the ground. Doesn't seem to have been affected at all by that. And Huddle hops or Waddle hops over to, to Lux. It waddles up to Lux. Lux takes a step away. It waddles up to Lux. Lux <laughs> takes a step away. <laughs> uh, it's like the line, like the, the Looney Tunes would draw a line in the sand. <laughs> <clears throat> so, will you accept the job? We shall. Good. What is uh what is your rate that you are willing to pay? For a job like this. Ten soul coins, perhaps. Oh. I was thinking I was thinking twenty since it was <clears throat> so uh since it is Doing you a great favor for uh, in ridding yourself of a competitor, they will have no choice but to turn to your wares. Yes, removing the competitor is important, but ten soul coins for five, I could get a horde of quasits and imps to attack this creature. Well, fine, then do it. I've tried. That Seems is... like you need to pay a little bit more. What is... Uh, you, you, you mentioned you have tried to use the closets and imps 
to lay waste to your to your uh, to your enemy. Yes, well, clearly it was not effective, but still, it is, it's, this work needs to be done with a particular finesse, I suppose. So, what if we made the agreement dependent on the outcome? If you can remove the competitor and you are able to do so, and perhaps steal his wares, then I may be willing to increase the price. But if you only are able to slay him and produce some evidence that he is no more, then that would provide the minimum repayment. So there is a potential for a bonus. We'll start with 10 as the baseline, and we'll go up from there. What are his wares? He trades in many things, but primarily magical potions and tinctures. And this is what you want us to recover? Substances. I would like to receive whatever it is that may, he may have that you would be able to carry. I think that's fair, although I was imagining that whatever we were able to steal and carry off would be ours to keep anyway. But if you wish to buy it from us afterwards, that's fine. So, all that there is left now is to enter into the contract. Oh. That's right. Don't tell me that you have reservations about signing a contract with my kind. Depends on the terms of the contract. They'll be quite boilerplate. In the event of your failure, I would be able to take your souls as payment. <clears throat> and we're going to have to see the contract and make sure that we agree with the definition of failure. All right. Why, why would we even do this? We, I'll sleep in the car. Why wager my soul like this? You don't have to, but this is how I do business, and I have to make certain assurances. For you to hire us, we have to sign a contract that says you get our souls if we die. Not if you die, if you fail. I, Take it. Not worth it. Think of it like this. Let's say we sign the contract, or let's say we do it without a contract. Very dangerous possibility, but still, if we were to not have a contract, and you were to come face to face with my competitor, and then he were to make a better deal with you, and perhaps turn the tables where you would come after me, well, how would I protect myself? Clearly, I need to have some kind of assurance that you will not betray me. Additionally, I need to have some assurance about the goods which will be procured and how they will be 
provided to me in exchange for the bonus. So as you can see, I am taking some risks here as well. So then we need some insurances on what the bonus entails. Also, your risks are somewhat limited, given that you've already established we are not going to violate the laws of the Wandering Emporium. And so we are very unlikely to accept a deal that requires us to come back here and kill you, unless your special deal with Master Hawkins is that people are allowed to kill you. You have said that you wish to follow the laws with that Master Hawkins enforces, but... That is as good as your word. And I'm sorry, but I don't take anybody at their word. In my business, doing so is quite dangerous. Would you take Master Hawkins at his word? Just curious. <laughs> I would especially not take Master Hawkins at his word. That's interesting, but my friend Akash does have a point that we're looking for work, not a wager. <laughs> yeah, oh. indeed, a if, wager. If, if we fail, I can completely understand you're not paying us. I was assuming you would pay us after the fact, but we don't expect to lose our souls if we fail. Any more than I would expect an employer to kill me if I fail at my job listen hmm. you are coming to me and yes i see value in the services that you can offer yes i have observed the work that you do and i am somewhat impressed but still you are the ones coming to me That's you true. are welcome and... to not want to engage in the terms that I have set and find work elsewhere. But I can assure you, here in the Wandering Emporium, you are unlikely to find anything that would compensate you in the ways that I am willing to. Not to mention, this could be a first step to a very mutually beneficial relationship. <laughs> More soul risking, you mean? Not worth it for me. Uh, up to you guys. <clears throat> I say we think about it. How, how long is this deal uh, on the table for? As long as my competitor lives. Okay. We will come back to you after we've had time to discuss it, probably tomorrow. Sure. Take your time. I will be here. So when we get outside, I'll say I am surprised to find myself saying it, but I agree with Takash. It does seem strange that we would enter into an agreement where we would lose our souls if we fail for doing work for someone doing work for someone else the thing is if we really fail it's more than likely we're losing our lives already so yeah i mean a fair a fair point is uh it might actually be better to have our souls belong to him than to some of the things that live in fernia that might kill us but there are a lot of unknowns here. I am a little concerned that his competitor might be at the level of a warlord themselves, and so therefore very dangerous. Uh, the risk of failure is therefore reasonably high. I mean, I trust the Silver Flame would protect me, but you guys, I don't know. <laughs> and you're positive we can't just go in and kill him? Um... I have been told that violence is not allowed here in the Wandering Emporium, and I especially don't want to get thrown out while we're waiting for our machine to be repaired. 
Plus, I don't think there's any actual money in killing him. There was something about stealing from him, uh, but I didn't really follow what people were talking about with that. <laughs> I think it was just idle speculation that he may have something valuable. I mean, and I would look at Blade and Lux because I don't really remember. The, my character wouldn't really remember the story. He doesn't. We already had like the fiend going by, by the time I showed up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall as a player. I just uh, remember. So, yeah, I as a player. Yeah. As a player, at a, one point in time, we were looking for a fiend coin because you needed that to go and like get the crown. Um, and we didn't have access to a fiend coin. The only one we had any lead on was the one that that guy owned. Uh -huh. uh, and so we were, there was discussion of having to have to conduct a heist to steal the fiend coin. <clears throat> you know, but luckily we didn't have to do that because that probably would make us persona non grata here in the Wandering Emporium. And of course, hunted Infernia by him. <laughs> oh yeah, you know we could go and find his competitor, and then see if the competitor actually will make us an offer. <laughs> yeah, that might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, he, him saying that made me think that we should go talk to him. <laughs> yeah, he didn't give you a whole lot of information to go on, though. No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> he's smart he, this is not his first rodeo well we could go we could head back to random in and get some more cups of grease and uh see if uh any that anybody there knows uh what uh if that was uh has any any uh anybody out out for Just having been in his presence, I'm sure there are very few stories of people who came away from dealings with him who were happy about him. And I is the beast that we're on, is that wandering through Fernia-ish? Or is it in its own dimensional area that we're something that we're not sure about? No, you, it's so... Un Wilfred's back this yeah. whole place is built upon and he has an ability to dig himself straight down to make it level with the area so he is able to kind of uh, and then when there's when it's time to, to move based on Master Hawkins' whims then Wilfred moves and to the different places but as far as you can tell, he physically walks to each place that he travels. But are are we in Fernia? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, Seven Golden Seals itself does exist as a kind of pocket dimension, but Wilfred, yeah. no. So the only thing I think of is if we. If we really wanted to, we can try to track one of his shipments and see who raids it and then reverse engineer who it is to go find them. It's a long shot, but a lot of random exploring without a vehicle, which I don't think is going to be very fun out there. But I mean, we could go back to him with a counter offer that we're not willing to take on that mission with those stakes, but that we're willing to serve as guards on a shipment. For a, some lesser fee, presumably. Even a soul coin or two might be enough to buy us another token from Master Hawkins. Right. I don't actually remember. There was some offer on the table to buy a soul coin, and then we, we didn't have to take it because uh, Master Hawkins basically just gave us one for treating Wilfred and do it such a bang up job, but I don't remember what the cost was for the token. Uh, the token is pretty expensive, I believe. Uh, 
but but yeah, he gave you guys a free token um for the work that you did with Wilfred. Uh and you know, he's given you tokens before as well because of like when uh Lux, Blade and Ewan were or I, I forget who it was, but when you guys were attacked at the Seven Golden Seals. It was I think Solomon, that was Solomon. Was the one who got injured. Yeah, Solomon and um, somebody else that was with him. But we purchased um, one at one point. I don't remember yeah. if that, that was probably with Solomon too. I don't remember exactly. But last time, before he agreed to give us one for free, uh, we did inquire about the cost of one. Maybe it was like four soul coins or something. Yeah. For some reason, I was for some reason I was thinking two, Let but me. I may be misremembering. Um, I want to say it's if four sounds right. Uh, oh, you know what? Maybe it's on the where the tokens are, magic items. They cost five soul coins a piece. Okay, so we're probably not going to raise that much money as caravan guards if it's 10 soul coins to charge an entire war camp. Yeah. <laughs> and take out their leader. It's probably not five for protecting some boxes. So that's, uh, you know, a little unfortunate because we can't just go back to Fernia and get more soul coins and then come back here because we'd need a token to come back here. We'd basically have to luck into running into Wilfred. Yeah. I wouldn't it's know, but luck. you've done it a couple times now. Uh, I think we only did it actually once. <laughs> and then every other time we tokened our way back here. <laughs> yes, yeah. the first time. Did anyone find out how much it was to stay at the random inn? Nope. Well, I mean, Lux stayed there last time. Um, see. Yeah, I used one of the golden rings from the Zorn Elder that I had. Oh, that's right. I use two of them to stay two nights. I have three left. So probably with the those rings, that would cover the cost of the stay for a night anyways. Unless you all want to share a room. In which case, you could do three nights, but that would be quite uncomfortable. But doable. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I don't think comfort. So, I mean, everyone enjoy your stay because this will probably be the last time we'll be in the Wandering Emporium. <laughs> Not much to enjoy, but it's fine. That does mean we could probably spend our last half a soul coin on accommodations. As long as we maintain the five, we need to pay tallow. So that should probably cover the the week for us, I would assume. I mean, do they need to block off the machine at night can we just sleep in there i don't know we could ask tallow if we can presumably they'll still give us access to the machine I don't, that works fine for me I, I don't need a fancy hotel 
Well, that would be more comfortable for me since I'm one of the few of us who actually has to deal with the heat. So we should go ask Tallow if that's acceptable. She may not want us in her garage overnight, although I don't know if her garage ever closes, since there really is no night. It's just perpetual glowing twilight in Vernia. So I was thinking, if theoretically we, were, we had to stay there, if I shifted Element's Pantone to ice, could he be like a mini AC unit for a room? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, with an action point? Yeah, with an action point, sure. <laughs> so if we can't get in there, we'll have a little mini AC unit. So I start headed back for the garage. Okay. So Tallow is busy working on the vehicle. Uh, you can see that she has uh, lifted the machine and removed the axle from the bottom. And she's, well, she's working on the removing the axle. So I mean, she I'll, I'll... you immediately. I would wait until it seems like there's an appropriate break. I interested to see the underside of the machine since it's the first time i have actually seen it without having to have, like punch down at an odd angle um yeah it actually pick a feather uh, out <laughs> <laughs> um so it, as has been kind of described before the the bottom is mostly a flat sheet of metal that kind of protects most of the uh, inner workings and, and would normally protect the axle as well. Uh, but you, with this view, you see that the bottom has a number of strange lines kind of traced throughout, um, which which you haven't seen on any other aspect of the machine. So whether that's decorative or integral to some of the functioning is not really immediately knowable. But you find a, an opportunity to uh, get Tallow's attention. And she turns to you and says, ah, yes, how can I help you? Uh, some of my friends and I were wondering if overnight we could sleep inside our vehicle as the, as it turns out, the random inn is uncomfortably hot. What Whereas our night? vehicle, well, the period of time when we tried to sleep. Uh, when I am a after I get the the war machine back on the ground uh you you could have free access to the vehicle but i i have to say that this shop is going at all times uh and so it may be quite noisy Understood. But if this is your only option, it is certainly agreeable. I think I could make it work, actually. I have silence. A reason to actually use it. <laughs> so, yeah, we probably will come back. Some of us, if not all of us. Thank you, Tello. Sure. Uh, is there anything else that I can help you with? Nope, that's it. What? Oh, I, I would say we, we did talk to Fatala, and uh, he, in order to work for him, you have to basically gamble your soul. 
So we're not sure we're going to do that. Ah, that is somewhat standard. It is how yeah, most it agreements seems... are done here in Fernia. I understand that, but combined with the rate of pay he's offering, just seemed a little excessive that not only wait we wind up not getting paid, that we would also lose our souls just Vita to pass the time. Vitala is uh, certainly a dangerous individual. Uh, I would be quite wary of entering any agreement with him, but uh, the at least the portion that you describe is pretty common. I'm sure, sure you're correct about that, but we are uh, we were not necessarily looking to gamble our souls away on a temporary job. Maybe for a more permanent employer, you know. Well, nothing's more permanent than the employer who owns your soul. That's true. Well, if there's nothing else that you need from me, I will return to working on your vehicle. Of course. So, uh, uh I assume, once we're outside, I would say, I assume we just feel free to wander around until we come back here to sleep. And we'll see how that goes. We can make the decision overnight if it seems like the uh, the random in will be actually better than sleeping inside the war machine with the noise. Sounds good. I feel like I could sleep easier with loud noises around me, especially inside the war machine, than I could in the extreme heat of Fernia. <laughs> and the vehicle has been upgraded to at least exclude the heat without eating up our soul coins. This is true. <clears throat> and I could just stand in the corner give give you more give everyone more uh space yeah like as i said we'll see how it works out we don't like it tonight we can always go to the random all right so, you... Lux is obviously free to go to the random inn tonight since she has credits there. <laughs> and she doesn't actually like people, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got those nosy ass barmaids. Right, that's true too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think we know which way uh, Belga next is going to go. If she's not here, she, he's going to go with her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the creature is definitely waddle hopping along uh, trying to keep pace with Lux. Often struggling. Um... All right, so uh, you guys want to, is there anything else that you want to do in the meantime for heading to the random inn? So, I mean, since we're, we're not staying at the random inn tonight, I'm not that keen on going back there. Um, at some point, I will get hungry uh, and I will cast create food and water uh and i i will i'm fine subsisting on that um obviously blade is going to need a few mugs of grease so we may wind up wandering back there for that i don't know otherwise i am just probably planning on 
wandering around in the heat to kill time until it's time to go to bed because I don't really have anything to do with my downtime otherwise. Uh, and even like eating, I guess, I guess I, you know, I probably would, if I get very thirsty, stop to use create food and water. Uh, but even then I, I would prefer to try to just keep my needs in check until we're going back into the vehicle so that at least it's comfortable. Yeah. You know, but basically I am, the plan right now is to suffer through the overheated days, uh, <laughs> looking forward to being able to get back into the cool, cool vehicle <laughs> and then get some, some rest. Although, yeah, I, otherwise, if we're all agreed, uh, I would want to go back to Fatala the next day just to say we've decided to turn down his offer. Yeah, I think that might be the run and leave him hanging. Yeah. Uh, then who knows? Maybe he'll sweeten the deal. Maybe he'll he'll offer some more money, offer to pay us up front rather than, I mean, he should at least pay us up front if, if we're agreeing to give him our souls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the point of a deal with a devil? Right. If you don't get to enjoy it first. Um. So you head to Fatala's the next day, um, and are you're greeted by that that lackey, but he immediately takes you up to Fatala, uh, and it doesn't look like Fatala has moved at all since you saw him last. And once again, he's got his fingers tented, and he says, So, what is, what is the decision that you have made? We have decided to refuse your offer, but we wanted to let you know that. It's just not, the, the economics of it just don't seem favorable enough to us, given that the loss of our eternal souls is the potential downside. We understand that that is very common here, but where we're from, it is very much not. So we do wish you luck. Uh, we will keep the nature of our conversation in confidence, but you will need to find someone else to undertake the mission. Thank you for your time. We do appreciate it. I do appreciate you letting me know personally rather than just not saying anything. It shows a bit of honor on your part. So, I do appreciate it. As I said, best of luck to you. And I'll leave half expecting like the doors to snap shut. <laughs> <laughs> no your soul is mine <laughs> that's not how the line goes <laughs> your soul is mine <laughs> right i was my my energy was more i'll swallow your soul <laughs> um all right, so um, let's let's call that call it there, um, okay. and then that'll give me some some time to kind of plan a couple of potential scenarios, given the events of tonight. Um, it just occurred to me: what if what if uh, his competitor probably has like some way of spying on him? And now thinks we're out to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you end that with a handshake with him, and then you leave. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, if I were a devil, I might even leak it to my competitor, hoping that out of self-interest we would wind up killing him anyway. <laughs> I mean, the worst case, the worst case is his competitor kills us, and then the tall is not out anything. Who cares? We probably would have just failed anyway. He's missed out on a couple souls. <laughs> yeah, gets a couple soul coins out of it. <laughs> All right. So, um, 